side. Intellectual honesty dictated that, and he convinced himself, and, and he backed into this decision not to be dishonest, not to openly placate, but because he lost uh, courage. And, uh, that's just my guess. I have no idea. I still think he's an honorable guy. We all can delude ourselves. I right. just think he intellectually deluded himself. You know, I had a great conversation with uh, Justice Thomas uh, a couple years ago when, he, when his book came out, maybe, it was maybe like, more like three years ago. And we asked him why, why, why growth on, uh, in the judiciary, you know, because people grow in, in that role. Yeah. And we asked him about that, and he's, uh, why it always seems to be growth in one direction and not the yeah. other. And he says, he says, because after a while, you stop getting invites to speak at you know, law school commencements. You stop getting invites to, um, to, you know, to the nice cocktail parties and stuff like that. And there's a, sort of a social isolation that occurs that, that wears on people after a while. He says, I don't really care about any of that stuff, so it's no problem for me. He says, but, uh, but, but that happens, and, and it does put pressure on people. And, I, I mean, I don't know that that's what happened in this case. I agree with you. I think Roberts is an honorable man. I don't think he would have deliberately written something he didn't believe in, but it's certainly an odd, it's an odd decision, especially for, for a, a judicial conservative to have taken. Well, I, I, I'll tell you, I have at times felt uh, he, uh, even, let's say a local column, you get, my column appears in the local paper, and I've never had an enemy in my, in my life that I know of, but I started writing this column and half the town is pissed off at me, because <laughs> everybody <laughs> takes politics so seriously, and and so you, every once in a while, I don't mean half the town, we're in a largely conservative, but still, a lot of people who used to really like, and I don't like it, I don't like that, that, that they think I'm a jerk because I'm a conservative. Well, you think, okay, I, I should tone this down. And I go, well, you know what? I, I, I don't think I should. And, and I remember one time, this is my, you might find this interesting, I, something you wrote that was contrary to what I believed affected me, and, I, and then I altered my position because I respect you and I thought about it. And then let me tell you, the, the, the other, this other shoe dropped. Then I came back later to conclusions that, no, I caved to your position ultimately, and I really think you were wrong. You want me to tell you what it was? Sure. This is just interesting. I don't mean wrong uh, in any way. You just, and, and maybe this is also a nuance and we would end up agreeing. But I remember when, when Obama first gave his speech uh, at uh, Tucson. Yes. Uh, a lot of us conservatives were, were saying how exploitive he was and all that. And you were openly saying, we've got to be gracious. He gave a speech calling people together. Now, and, and, and we've got to give credit where credit's due. I, I said, you know, okay, I'm going to, in, in my column criticizing him, I'm going to acknowledge that he is good that he called us together. But then I started later thinking about that, and I, 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 I really have, as, as time has grown, I've become more uh, disgusted with Obama's Tucson speech because I think they turned that into a political rally. It was all about him. It was all about politicizing this event where... Uh, Jared Loeffner was not a conservative, and this was not about coming together. This, this shooting had nothing to do with political strife. It had nothing to do with conservatives, any more than the uh, Timothy McVeigh thing had to do with conservative talk radio, like right. Clinton tried to make. In other words, Obama, it was a non sequitur. For him to give that speech and talk about political unity implied that the people who said Sarah Palin put those targets on congressional districts was literal. It, it was it was to give credence to that to gain political mileage, and and so it's the wrong time for Obama to have called for unity because unity disunity had nothing to do with that shooting, it, it, and it implied on purpose that conservatives uh, incite violence with hate speech, and I mightily resent it. By the way, I think you're a wonderful guy, nice guy. And, and everything you say, you can defend it, and I'm not trying to browbeat you here. I'm talking about my evolution. Sure. And, and in the context of reading what you said, it really, well, you know, maybe i got to rethink this. And I think that's the kind of thing that, uh, by the way, I think Roberts is going to seriously regret this, just like I did, uh, regretted my, my change on that position, in, in a very micro way. Here. Yeah, no, no, I, I, you know, I agree, and, and um, I, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on, 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 the, on the one point, um, because I think I think the context of that was it had already been politicized, and it had already been used as a as a bat against conservatives, and and I think at that point when Obama gave a speech, it was that was already going on, and so I think that it was good to have him say nobody's political 
you know, no, no sane and rational politics were, were involved in this, and people need to stop saying that it was. And, look at what he said in his advisor a few days later, browbeating conservatives. Again. Totally, totally I mean, agree with you on that. Don't totally agree with you on that. that. And I hope you don't think I'm too off the wall in this. And now no. I've always thought that was another. This I know this interview I've taken us in wild directions, but it's just that's what's it's, fun that, to me. It's interesting. Stuff. <laughs> that's why that's why interviews are fun. If all we were doing is reading from the book, I mean that wouldn't be fun. This is yeah. what makes interviews but fun. I, but I but I was serious. That was um, I, I thought it was interesting that you took that position. But but the main thing is I didn't disrespect you for right. For, because I disagreed with you, I, or, or thought you were sucking up to the other side. I knew you genuinely believed it. Yes. That, that's another thing, by the way, another little tangent i got to go on here. Uh, I, I find it so disheartening when our side, I expect liberals to do the worst a lot of times. You may disagree with me on it. I do. I think the, the Democratic Party is institutionally corrupt when it circles the wagons around uh, a felonious perjurer and Bill Clinton when it refuses to even submit a budget for 1,100 days. I think that right. whole party that is enabling Obama to destroy this country financially is is almost permanently corrupt. But that but that said, I think when we when we have these intramural debates during the the primary, it was very discouraging and disheartening to me to see the different uh, uh, people who supported certain candidates literally demonize. Uh, their opponent's supporters, and, and to suggest that they had bad motives or they, they were against freedom or whatever it was, I never suspected people's, uh, impugned people's motives. And by the way, I'm not impugning Roberts here. I'm giving him an out. I think he did cave, but I don't think it's because he's a dishonorable guy. So there's, right. there's a distinction here. I'm not, I'm not being a hypocrite here. But these people that were the most vicious, uh, what, whether it was the Romney people saying, that we were anti-Mormon for being against him, or, or the, the new people. So, I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm just glad it's over, because some of my best Twitter friends were just going at each other to the point where I, I, it was affecting me. Yeah. I, I don't know if you experienced Oh, that, I did. Really I did, yes. I, I did. I, I, I experienced that quite a bit. And, I mean, I think I even tweeted out a few times, I'll be really glad when the primaries are over. I don't care who gets the nomination now. I just want the primaries to be over. Uh, because, yeah, it got very, very nasty. Very, very, And it happened in 2008. Um, and I wasn't around for, for, you know, Twitter wasn't around, and I, was, I wasn't commentating in 1996, but as I recall, uh, during that, it got, it got rather nasty as well. 2000, same thing. So, um, it's one thing for me to say, Romney is a flip-flopper, flip-flopper and, and all this stuff. It's another thing for s- somebody to say, for me to say, anybody that supports Romney is an absolute jerk. And, and irris- yeah. I mean, I, and I just America. don't understand going to that level. And, and it's wrong 90% of the time, 99% of the time. Yes. People are supporting people because they really believe they ought to support them. It's not because they're, they're, they've caved or they're, there's something wrong with them. I completely agree with you on that. And I think that there is a lack of graciousness that afflicts people when they're in the heat of the moment. Uh, and that's when you need graciousness the most, is when you're in the heat of the moment. And, and, and there's something else you need besides gra- beyond graciousness. It's that block button on Twitter. <laughs> That's yeah. even more effective than graciousness. You know, I I, 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 I have you know at the on the blog when I was doing my own blog and at Hot Air, we you, I, I would never block people for um, for disagreeing with me or even being no. discourteous. No. Abusive, abusive, occasionally. So I would occasionally ban a commenter, uh, but but. Very, very rarely. I have no problem using a block feature on, on Twitter because Twitter is a completely different thing. There are people whom I do not want to gather around at the water cooler. And frankly, if, if you're going to be abusive, if you're going to be, um, if you're going to be just uh, you know, completely hateful, there's no... ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, I have no reason to, I have no reason and, to read your tweets. And, and I used to not block anybody, but during the Sandra Fluck thing with with the Rush thing, I had at least 200 liberals telling me I needed to go kill myself, or he did, or all the. Well, I, I finally decided it was, even though they're all full of it, it, it just was affecting my day. And so, yeah. why not? I blocked them because because out of sight, out of mind. I didn't I didn't I didn't have any uh, illusion that liberal insanity had diminished the slightest. But at least I didn't have to think about it. I mean, we're all psychological creatures i don't want that negativity to seep in at whatever level I mean, we got enough negativity to deal with i completely agree with you on that and by the way i had the same reaction during the exact same 
uh, debate. So, yeah, I, I, I banned a few people, or blocked, not banned, blocked a few people off my Twitter feed at that point in time. And believe me, I'm, I'm a happier person for having done that. So I, I feel you, brother. <laughs> I really yeah, do. And by the way, blocking, that doesn't do anything but just keep the guy from harassing you. It doesn't limit him in any way. Right, exactly. You don't have to read his crap. Right, and he doesn't, <laughs> and he no longer, and he no, no longer can read yours, and so therefore yeah. everybody's happy. <laughs> everybody's happy at that point. It's That's the, right. It's it, it shouldn't even be called the block feature. It should be called the happiness feature on Twitter. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Well, David, I know we got to let you go, but once again, folks, David Limbaugh, author of The Great Destroyer, Barack Obama's War on the Republic. There's a lot more in this book. We, we only scratched the, the surface of the surface of this book. There is plenty more in this, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get David back uh, soon to talk more about yeah, the book you know, and more about to. politics. I, I, it was my fault we didn't talk about the book. I guess after 200 interviews, I'm kind of sick of it myself. <laughs> I really think your readers and your listeners owe it to me, me personally, in, in all my glorious narcissism, to get this book because uh, I had the humility not to talk about it and force it down your throat. There you go. The you owe it to me, buddies, that is, friends. That is the most unique pitch I've ever heard. Isn't that something? Book. That's I'm great. Shameless. Yeah, that's great. I, I love that. Well, we're all about shameless uh, self-promotion at the Ed well, Morrison really, show. it is. I want to say one thing about the book substantively. It is a comprehensive, encyclopedic uh chronicling of everything Obama's done since the crimes against liberty went to press around June of 2010. I mean, it's all in here, and it is documented. And if you want ammo to take to your lovely liberal friends or the moderates that you need to convince in the election, please take this handbook. There you go. David Limbaugh, the great destroyer, Barack Obama's war on the republic. Go buy it now because we didn't talk about the book. So you <laughs> owe it to David Limbaugh. You owe it to yourself. <laughs> to go out and buy this book. I love that pitch. I'm going to use that pitch a lot. All right, thank David, you. thank you so much for being with us, uh, and congratulations on the success of the book, and uh, I'm hoping we can get you back real soon. I'd love to. Ed, you're, you're, you do great work, and as I say, I rely on it a lot. I did in this book, and I will continue to. Keep up the good work. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. Uh, David, thanks so much. for. I, I've just stopped the recording. Thanks so much for being, uh, being on with us today, and I, I'll have this up about 2 o'clock Eastern time, I believe. Was that fun? I mean, to me, I, I had, had a, a lot great of fun time. in that because it was just a chance to.